All right, so we're now walking dead list for the next few months. Yeah, at least till, uh, what, February? Yep. February, right? Yep. Hello. Uh, so you just got done watching it. I'm I not did. happy with it. You go ahead and tell me how happy you are with it. I mean, man, I, it was definitely paced a little bit slower than I thought it would be. I mean, it, I like the scary I, with, with the the whisperer thing, man. I liked all of that mm-hmm. up to a point. I thought it was done very well. It was very horror movie ish. It was very like I imagine watching that from the perspective of someone who did not read the comics. It had mm-hmm. to have been just when that when that whisperer dodged that attack from Jesus it was yeah. like even though you knew it was coming as a comic reader it was like oh my god but with Jesus lies my problem but before we get into that uh, we're the podcasting dead obviously from the name we talk about the walking dead a lot but we've got a lot more on the way and just to answer a quick question and we don't do we, we, we do mail calls each week to answer questions but no JP's not giving up on the Michonne game we had uh, what happened I was out of town then we had Thanksgiving. So the last two weeks have just been busy, and we haven't really had time to to do the game. But we will be back on the uh, Telltale Walking sure. Dead games, I promise. But um, but we do lots of stuff. So, you know, if you like podcasting, just give us a subscribe. Maybe yeah. a like. Yeah. And if you have any suggestions as far as stuff you'd like us to discover, you know, we're uh, we're into all kinds of geeky kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we're always, you know, willing to talk about this, that and the other. Yeah. So. We also do a few comic reviews. So hit the subscribe button and join us. Uh, so obviously, spoiler alert, as we get into uh, season nine, episode eight. Yeah, we're going deep. So, yeah, <sighs> Here we spoilers go. Spoilers abound. I just feel like Jesus's death is a perfect example of what has been wrong with the walking dead that i what i thought angela kang was getting away from and i know i'm gonna hurt some feelings and hurt right. you know whatever and that's fine i really at this point i don't care because of this one thing i've learned from podcasting in the last two or three years i could come out and say i am glad you're alive and someone will deb- debate it so you know what i mean i just gonna say what i say and uh, if you disagree cool for you man you know um but i think that Angela Kang let me down this episode. I think all season she's done amazing. And I think the killing Jesus, I love that once again for, excuse my language, fucking nine seasons now. Daryl Dixon has this freaking like thick layer of plot armor and God forbid he get killed or anything. But let's take a character who has, I thought Angela Kang was more, and she probably is. This is not saying that her credibility or her ability as a showrunner has been completely annihilated i'm just saying for this particular episode what makes me mad is the fact that you know jesus is an underutilized character you know that fans even people that don't read the comics have been like hey i like that jesus guy be cool to get some more face time with him no because there it's like she slid back into this scott gimpish childish scott gimple Kind of, I don't want to say childish. I don't know the word I'm looking for, but very just, just gimplish, predictable. Yeah, yeah very gimplish yeah. way of thinking. Well, it's the mid-season finale. We have to kill a big character. Um, no, you don't. You know, like Jesus could have just seeing that Walker dodge that attack, and then Jesus being like, "Oh shit!" Right, and then killing it, and then they fighting off the rest, and they pull the mask off. Bam! That finale would have been great. It would have been like, "Oh man!" And they people will be like, "Oh no, you got to kill someone to." No, you don't. Not in that way. And if you are, kill Daryl, man. I'm sorry. I like Daryl this season, but oh, I am, yeah, we've already lost Rick this season. I'm so sick of Daryl being able to survive everything. While I, I'm done with Daryl, like I, I know Daryl. I've seen Daryl. Let me get to know one of these other characters. I mean, what you're doing is taking away every one of your main characters and leaving us with a show that's practically going to be filled with. You know, B-list characters. I mean, aside from obviously Michonne. So I'm mad. So, yeah, I'm sure someone's already furiously typing in the comments section. Have at it, man. Whatever. I just, I thought that that was a stupid decision. I really thought. I said, like a podcast two ago, well, hey, with Rick out of the way now, you know, maybe we're going to get some more time to get to know Jesus. And, And no, no, let's just kill him off. And I love it that Angela Kang in an interview straight up said that it was for shock value. This does not stir, serve the story. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. They were thinking, okay, who can we kill that really show how serious of a threat the Whisperers are? Right. It's got to be Jesus. That's shocking. No, it doesn't. Kill Aaron. Kill Daryl, which I like Aaron, but 
anyways, I've ranted. I just was not, I was not, uh, compared to the rest of the season, which I give like four and a half out of five stars for the entire rest of this mm-hmm. season, I was not happy with this episode. And I think the decision to kill De- kill Jesus shows that one of two things, either Angela King has definitely had some Scott Gimple rub off on her, or there are still going to be things that Scott Gimple because he has the final say so, you know, yeah. she she's the showrunner, but everything has to go through him. He has to approve it. And I, I don't know. I just feel like Scott, Scott, Scott Gimple had something to do with this. Yeah. Well, one thing for me, man, I'll admit last night it was spoiled for me that Jesus was going to die. So whatever like uh, genuine emotions I was going to have, like seeing that happen, which I kind of feel like I would have seen it coming because he's he's having this badass like well, montage again, of ninja moves. Again, that's the Scott Gimple bullshit right. I wish we could get away from. Very predictable deaths. Remember back in the day of like Glenn Mazar in season three where Herschel's walking through and all of a sudden his legs getting bit and you're like, what the hell? And no. then a, a random episode that's not a finale nor a premiere, Lori and T-Dog die. And you're like, what the hell just happened? I mean, like when it becomes to when it comes to a mid when it comes to a finale period or a premiere, it's it, it's just gotten so predictable. And then when Jesus is like, go, I'll hold him off. I'm like. Oh, God, they're going to kill Jesus. Totally not expecting them to kill Jesus. I'm like, no, they're not. No, they're not. And then they do. And I'm like, Jesus, man, let's just fall back into the same old bullshit that turned people away for two seasons. I mean, I I think if it was me, I think ideally I would have had Jesus watch Aaron get killed and that really hardens him into a more militaristic leader. You know, he like he's out for blood now. Now he's not so much the peaceful like he turns into the total badass that he is just now. He's not really so caring about saving lives. Although I'm still holding out hope that uh, Aaron with his uh, his metal hand, he'll eventually go full on Ash from Evil Dead and have a chainsaw, you know, on his nub. So or at least go full Merle and have like a spike. If nothing else, yeah, we're in wartime, so hey, put a bayonet on there. Come on. But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't think I'm as heavy of a Jesus fan, but even still, I think there was definitely a missed opportunity with really developing his character, seeing someone he's, you know, he's definitely got chemistry with, watching watching him die right in front of his eyes. I, de- I definitely think a big missed opportunity. I'll And for the I fans that are severely that. butthurt that how dare I say something negative about the show, keep in mind that, of course, I'm going to be a little pissed because Jesus... If you've listened, I've said many times is my favorite character oh, in the Jesus comics. Fan, yeah, I, did, I mean, I just he's he's a great character. I think that he is just a. It's, it's so many points I could do an entire podcast of why he's such a great character in the comics, but it just it pisses me off. To, it, it's it's again, God forbid Daryl die or Daryl get hurt or Daryl be. I mean. God, his plot armor is so thick, I don't know how he can move around without bumping into people. I mean, it's ridiculous, man. I mean, if nothing else, I don't want Daryl da- there when Jesus died because it's like, of course, Daryl's there and every- anyone will die. But I don't know. I just, I, I'm i am off the, I mean, and I like Daryl this season. I mean, go back and listen. I've said this whole season. I like Daryl. I feel like he has a purpose now. But then I'll tell you something else. I, I was so mad that I didn't really watch much of the scenes from next se- next half of the season. Mm-hmm. They did show Beta. He looks that. creepy as shit. I, I, I think they did a great job. One thing I didn't like, not 100% sure, but someone told me they saw a clip of Daryl and Beta fighting. So, yeah, that's right, Daryl. Fans rejoice because I'm pretty sure what's going to happen, the Negan beta fight, that story arc, I bet some of it's going to go to Daryl. We won't get a Negan and beta fight. Oh, no, because good old Norman Reedus, he's got to have his screen time. So as with a lot of other good story arcs that have fell flat because they put them on Daryl, here's going to be another one. Daryl's going to fight beta instead of Negan, which is, if you read the comics, a really awesome scene. Or it could end up being a, a Negan Daryl team up. Who knows? I doubt it. They, 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 they're not they're not creative enough to do that. But no, man, I think I think as pissed off as you are about the Jesus thing. And keep in mind, I watched it last night. You right. just got done watching it. I didn't watch it, and I'm still this. You've furious. had time to marinate, yeah, to stew. But no, I was pissed off about the Henry storyline, man. Too much Henry. I, I wasn't. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't one, care. I mean, he, he this takes, is a finale on top of that. Yeah. I don't want to see. It. Actually, what's crazy is I swear on everything that I know and love. You see the book right here. I'm reading the new remaining, um, which actually is isn't called remaining it's called uh, Lee it's called Harden which but it'd be like the Walking Dead having a book series and then starting a new series called Grimes and it mm-hmm. just picks up with Rick but I'd seriously just 
now. I mean, it's like a few pages back. There is a scene where this kid who is a soldier is led out of the the compound by a girl, and they go and they're drinking moonshine and mm-hmm. partying, and he's just snuck back in. And then I watch The Walking Dead, and there's Henry doing exactly what huh. I'm reading in this book. Like I could show you, it's like three yeah. pages past my mark. So that was pretty wild. But yeah, I'm with you, man. The Henry thing, you know, if I'm gonna, I, I might like him. I didn't like Carl as much in the beginning of the show. Loved him towards uh, midway, but. Too much Carl for, I mean, too much Henry for a mid-season finale, man. Well, I mean, it just for me, I mean, I know, you know, he's a, he's a teenager. He's probably never drank before. But one little sip of moonshine and he's like Otis Campbell all of a sudden, oh, yeah. you know. Well, and, and then on top of that, again, it's a finale, man. And the whispers everybody's waiting for. Why are you forcing us to sit here with this and, and listening to him get lectures? And We don't need the teenage I don't angst. need that, man. Agreed. That, that was, if anything for me, man, it was the, the pacing of this episode was way, way off. I right. Mean, as far as, Compared you know, to the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, season finale, you're, you're building up this big like uh, horror movie montage kind of episode, which, I mean, the moments of that, like you said, were great. Gr- visually stunning. Oh, I yeah. Mean, the barn, the, the mist. acting. I loved, I yeah. loved Eugene's acting, man. I, I thought that, um, I thought that the, um, I thought he did great. Um, you know, when they pull him out of the thing and he's just like, this isn't a regular hurt. Yeah, their brains are alive and brains can change. Right. Brains are evolving, baby. Yep. I don't know why I turned him into an Elvis Josh McDermott bit, did a great job acting yeah, that man. scene. And I I just, I feel like, and again, I know there are people probably already, you know, just going, you know, like, oh, you in the comment section. That's cool, man. Whatever. Because I, I have my opinion and I did not like that. I think that this episode was a sour grape. In a pa- in a batch of otherwise delicious fresh grapes, you know, I, th- <laughs> I think there was a lot to like in this episode, just not enough of it. If that makes yeah, sense, that's a good way to put it. I mean, they had good parts. It I did, mean, it absolutely know, did. The uh, the uh, Father Gabriel and Negan, you know, going back and forth. I really enjoyed that. Father was, Gabriel's the worst gatekeeper ever. I, I'm telling you, man. So he just left it unlocked. You think he meant to do that? Well, man, his butt is on the line. I'm not talking about his ass. I'm talking about Rosita's. Right. If you know, if he don't get up to hilltop, he might not be getting any more butt. And uh, <laughs> what's so he, he gonna just do was then? so distracted. Yeah, man, that's know. what he's thinking about. I mean. <laughs> I see, and that's another thing that sucks, man. It was so cool in the comics how Negan got out. Well, there was one point where uh, what, should, should I go there? Yeah, go because there was one point. Where oh, he, we, we talked. My does... girlfriend and I talked about that, but then all right, cut slight comic spoiler. It won't last more than thirty seconds. You've been warned. Three, two, one. Talking about where the gate, where the, the, the it opens. At one point, that does happen. But he shuts and he's himself just like, back yeah, in, just to right? prove to Rick, right? So yeah, I mean. He's... Maybe they're trying to bypass the whole thing. I, I don't they know. are because yeah. the preview for next season shows him back at the sanctuary okay, so alone, but like you know, right. like doing his little whistle thing. But gotcha. Right. I like the I like the Negan and, and Father Gabriel. I just like I said, man. I think that this episode, I think this season overall has been strong. I think Angela King's done a great job. Poor decision. That doesn't mean that this won't go down as one of the best seasons of the show, or that Angela King won't still bring the show back from the the bad points it's been i just think that this was a very poor decision in her i i I don't think that someone always has to die on a finale or or a Mm -hmm. premiere i mean it does not have to happen you know what i mean like you can do a good premiere i definitely think people need to die but i don't know man just go back to like like i don't know just go back to where big deaths happen randomly and you do not expect them i mean we've gotten to the point now where when there's a big premiere or finale we're like oh god who's gonna i mean i remember season two I mean, like, nobody big died in season two's uh, finale, but it was still one to remember, which I know a lot of people hate season two. Sorry, unpopular opinion. I love season two. But, you know, you had the, some side characters die, but it still was a heart-pounding, like, whoo, when the episode ended, you were like, good God, yeah. need to breathe, man. I mean, it just, I don't know, man. I, I, I It was, I think, what a waste of a character. What a waste of, of Thomas Paine's time as an actor. Like, you were given this character that just has so much potential to, to, to almost be another Rick. I mean, alongside, like, Michonne and the other, Carol and these other leaders, easily could fall in, in line with one of those as being a great leader. Uh, but let's just get you. Let's do the thing of let's show him a lot on one episode and then kill him on the next episode because that's the Scott Gimple way. It, it definitely could have been a, a great chance to you know really really grow his character. But I like mean, I said, I love the idea and I like Aaron, mind you. But I love the idea of him 
like killing Aaron. Like Jesus has been teaching Aaron martial arts, right? How badass would it be for like, you know, one of the whispers like dodges and then Aaron is like, oh God. And he fights off a few of them really well, you know, and Jesus is trying to get to him, but he's seeing his martial arts trainings work because Aaron's Mm -hmm. kicking ass and all of a sudden one just stabs him in the back. Tragic. It fits the story. It hardens Jesus. I mean, and then on top of that, look how badass Jesus was. I know, I know what you're going to say, listener. You're going to go, oh, well, it shocked him so bad. Okay, well, Morgan going off and trying to kill him shocked him. But guess what? After a second, the process, he was dodging everything as fast as Jesus was. I know this shocked him, but get the fuck out of here. He's Jesus. That's why it would have made more sense for Aaron to be the one to die, because Aaron's gotten faster. He's learned martial arts with Jesus, so he fends off a few of them. But then when that one jumps, it just shocks him so bad, and he's not fast enough, because Jesus, I feel like, would have been fast enough to have been like, holy shit, but had his back. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I, I just feel like, again, I think it was piss poor writing. Yeah. And this is not a Steven Crowder thing of change my mind. Like, you tell me all day how this was great writing. That's cool. That's your opinion. I will not. When Herschel died, I was furious at night, right? The emotion of it. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, screw this show. The next morning, granted, we weren't podcasting, but I was like, man, that was a good episode. Like, I hated that Herschel died, but that shows you what a good episode it was that it got you that furious no here i am the next day and i'm still just as furious it was a mistake it's just like killing carl this is another scott gimple crock of shit i'm ranting too long give your peace i'm just i'm i'm mad i I, again i you take a great character that could have become awesome like carl now that rick's gone this would be carl's moment to shine not henry yeah i would have been much happier seeing uh seeing carl mac on enid but of than, course than it's henry. scott gimple and you know classic scott gimple you have to you know it's you've, you've got to make your deaths extremely predictable and timed all the same so we always know on a mid-season finale someone's gonna die and I'm sorry, maybe I'm just feeling a little bit big brotherish. Kind of think the uh, blacksmith's son looks a little old for Enid. That's just me. Maybe I'm a little wrong. Little creepy, right? But uh, I, I was I was thinking Henry definitely looks more like age appropriate for Enid. I I'm thinking though, man. But Enid was probably what 14, 15, I mean, may, and it's may, been six she years, so totally she might age, even be legal yeah. drinking age now. But I don't know. Just just looking at it, I was like, oh, little Enid is with with this. I don't I don't know. Stay, I feel, stay away from my Enid. Uh, well, they hadn't song. aged any in real life, so the last time you saw them, they were way too far in age to <laughs> to be a couple. And but. I mean, look, maybe the age of consent at Hilltop's, so, you know, a little uh, fuzzy. I don't, maybe people don't even keep up with birthdays anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. It was a little weird, but I, then again, I, it's yeah. just you have to keep in mind that she is older now. It's true. I know? get like you know through the eyes of the show. Maybe she's just one of these you know. Chicks that looks a lot younger than she. I don't know, but I just. I'm excited. A little, a little weird. I'm excited to see where it goes. But I'm gonna tell you, we have another classic case of Daryl taking someone's storyline or interfering with. I want to see Negan and Beta go at it. Like, I mean, and, and don't get me wrong. Like, I get. And Angela Kang was like, "This is our way to divert. You can still diverge from the. Aaron's alive in the comic. Kill him or." Daryl's like just do something different you know what I mean like I just oh I just think that this is I think that this I think that I think that this is right along the lines with Carl what a wasted character which Carl of course had at least at least with Carl we had a chance to see his progression as a character Jesus was showed up and they just gave us a little bit in his seasons and then they you know I'm just I, I think it was I think it was a stupid decision but um I don't know, man. I mean, I hope this isn't a, a, a taste of thing. Like, I don't want to see, I mean, Daryl and Beta fighting. Yeah, that's cool. I want to see Negan and Beta fighting, and you don't have to keep it by the storybooks. I don't care if the Alpha and Negan thing doesn't play out the exact same. You can do that another way. I just don't want to see great moments taken by other characters. You know what I mean? I don't know how to explain it. Like, I want to no, see, you. like, I'll Negan... We just ask if you read the comics, you know that there's so much potential there with Negan because of the source material, and you can diverge from it a little bit. But I mean, if you're not going to at least give us a little bit of, or something like that, then just kill him or something. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm up I, in my feels. I, I think we're going to get a golden Negan story arc. I, I really do. I'm hoping, you know, that he doesn't just uh, turn turn out to be another heel. But, but I mean, we saw some uh, some development with him in that little conversation with Father Gabriel. So, oh yeah. I think his heart's getting warmer. Oh, yeah. I hope so. I don't know, man. I just... Oh, I don't know. 
I don't know. Not feeling this one at all. But again, otherwise, great season. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I thought there was a lot to like in a in this midseason finale. Just it, it was just few and far between. Everything was put in, in in the right place. The just the execution was not right. Yeah, and one thing the uh, the whisper heard seems re- it's almost like it's on remote control. I mean, you would still think like firecrackers going off over here. That was they stupid. Would, you know, yeah. I mean, how well, I would are say they stupid? Just, but I, yeah. I agree. I thought the same thing. Like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So these leading. Whispers have so much control over this herd that they ignore their basic instinct to go towards sound it's and eat it. It's all telepathic, right? I mean, I get that they're kind of like like shepherding this herd, but I mean to just. I think right, what would have been I mean, cool is to have had like they had their ways. Like for instance, when the firecrackers happened, say Daryl, you know, because again, I liked the moments of this episode, like Daryl being on that roof with the dog, and then you know he's like, "What the hell?" and they. Go back, but maybe like the whispers have their own methods. So like Daryl throws firecrackers, they start heading that way. Then all of a sudden, you, I don't know, you hear more firecrackers up front. Like one of them lit them and threw them ahead of them, and then the zombies divert. You know what I mean? It'd have been cool to right. be like, or like some whistling or something, or like a right. a cat hanging from a fishing pole. I don't know something to and to, man, those teenagers like trying to like. Trap a zombie with a cat in a hole. What the kind of sociopaths are we dealing with here? Yep. Somebody yeah, needs to do know. some serious parenting at Hilltop. Enid's running around with an old blacksmith's son. And kids <laughs> are drinking moonshine outside the wall. It ain't the, the blacksmith's son. Who was it? He was working with the blacksmith. Yeah, right? but that's dude from. He's been in. The, he's been in the show for like a season or Has two. Has he? I, I didn't. He's one of the saviors that they captured uh, from the sanctuary. Not from the sanctuary. Excuse me. From the. Um, what was the? It's it's the same outpost that they attacked originally, which kind of kicked it off. You know, okay. it's the one where Glenn killed the first. You know, his first person. All these B characters, man. I can't keep them all. The in satellite line. outpost. Yeah, that's what it was. A satellite okay. outpost. Yeah, and that's yeah, me, That's where but, he's uh, from. All right. Well, there you go. I, just, I figured Blacksmith <laughs> is a family operation. <laughs> that's why I thought you thought he was too old because he was in last season and him and Maggie were kind of flirting. You know, he was more along the lines of like setting up to be Maggie's Dante. Oh, wow. But I totally missed that. I okay. thought. And, and now he's with Enid. But they say Maggie's, you know, every article that I've read now says that Maggie is, you know, it's pretty for sure she's coming back. So it's going to be interesting to see how she, you know, takes the death of Jesus. And I don't know, man. I just, I I don't know. Don't know, don't know. Kind of like a comic where they make such a stupid move in a comic that you just don't even, you don't even know if you, you, you go and you just pull it off your list. You're like, you know what, I want I, I, I don't care to. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm still going to watch it, but I'm telling you, dude, I hope this is not a sign of things to come. Like, come on, man. Get out of these Gimple ruts. This is a Scott Gimple move. You've written such a great season. I promise you, Angela King, listen to me. You did not have to kill off Jesus in order to end that episode in a jaw-dropping moment. Just the fact that zombies are now people wearing skins and fighting and that in itself could have been done shocking enough to where, you know, and like like you said, I actually, you know what, I really like Aaron, but Aaron should have died. That's a much better way of writing it. Again, we could have had the whole Aaron, he learned martial arts from Jesus, which is why we saw that whole thing of them training. He starts fending them off pretty good. You feel a little safe, and then all of a sudden, shoom, and then Jesus is just furious. And so now Jesus, who we just saw was very lax in his leadership position, when he goes back, he's ready for war. You know what I mean? They just killed Aaron. So he goes back to the hilltop telling people, like, you know, arm up. You know, the time of relaxing's over. There's a bigger threat out there. Blah. Nope, none of that. Yeah, I, I think if I can paint a picture, like, like Aaron's fighting and all of a sudden a zombie grabs him from behind, like face on his forehead, arm wrapped around his torso, and Jesus is watching, or what, you're ready for these jaws to clamp down on his throat, and all of a sudden a knife comes right. up and slits his throat right in front of Jesus' face. And you're like, oh my gosh. We should write this on? show. We should, man. We should write this show. Let's, we, we can do a companion series. I don't know. but yeah, We could I mean, do a fan fiction series. We certainly could. We would get sued for that. We probably would get sued for that. Uh, maybe. Not if we didn't make any money off of it, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I just uh, I, I like this season. I like Angela King. I just do not like this episode. I think that killing Jesus was a terrible decision. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to focus on any other parts of the episode because like you said, I think that the elements were there to make it a great episode. It just wasn't. The pieces were there. They just weren't quite moved in the right way. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, besides some of the filler components, I, I like the, the whisper sequence. 
I mean, like I said, I, I think the Jesus thing could have been handled a little differently, a little better, you know. I did like, you know, and, and okay, so I've been negative this entire podcast, and if you've made it this far in, let me give you a little bit. Get the poison out, brother. Let me give you a little positive. Like, things I did like, I, I even though we as comic readers knew about the whispers, we knew it was up, we knew it was going on, I still found it to be creepy as hell. And I love the way... Um, I love the way that, like, you just have that constant, like, why the hell are they following them? And, you know, Daryl going off trying to lead them away. I, I, I liked all of that. Like you said, the element. I like everything there. I just, the execution was not right, man. I, mm. Mm-mm-mm. No. Now, I don't usually get this up. You, you know this could have been a great character because I don't, like I said, with Carl, I'm like, what the hell? This was a terrible mistake, but... I'll still maintain that killing Jesus was stupid. It was stupid. It was stupid. It was so stupid. Man. I wonder if uh, Negan's got a spare wardrobe hiding at the uh, sanctuary. You think that's why he's going back? Probably. Get him another jacket. That'd be great, you know? Maybe he's, he's got a... It just opens up a, a wardrobe, and he's just got leather jackets and the red scarves. And I would have loved to have at least seen... Uh, I mean, which Jesus was badass, yes, but, I mean, like, Michonne had gotten there. I wanted to see, like, some team-up badass stuff here, and I don't know. Yeah, it looks like that's how the uh, the mid-season premiere might might start off. I mean, Between who? Michonne and Aaron? What's Aaron going to use his new one arm martial arts that Jesus taught him? Like, I wanted to see Jesus coming out the gate. Jesus has some great scenes with the whispers man and then no. instead now which i guess it's just gonna be which i really like ross marquand the guy that plays aaron i think that he's a great actor oh yeah he seemed i mean his impressions are so i mean he's he's great i, I think a lot of the guy but in a story writing sense it would have made more sense to have killed him than jesus i will say yeah, that i can't argue with that and for the daryl lovers that got all butt hurt earlier when i was like killed daryl no i've said it go back and listen i've i, I dig daryl this season he's got a purpose he's got a point like i'm I'm liking Daryl again. I just am really tired of his plot armor, and I'm tired of uh, of just him taking other people's story arcs. I really am hoping that, and I mean, I want to see Daryl go head to head with the Whisperers, but let other characters have their moment, man. Like, God forbid, if Norman Reedus ever—that's what happens when you put all of this time and investment into like one or two characters. Then when they leave, it's just like. People are, I mean, like, give us other character, like, let other characters have their moments. The Daryl fans can, they'll be okay. I think we got some good Negan stuff coming up. I, I really hope so. I really hope so. And, and I mean, you really got a sense of foreboding. I mean, as far as whatever happened up at the hilltop with Michonne, all the bad blood. I mean, her and Carol's conversation, it's just odd to see. I mean, they were family, you know what right, I mean? Right. And to see them. Like, having that discussion and just not even, you know, like, Michonne wants no part of anything. Yeah, and you saw, saw how quickly everyone outside of the hilltop farming or whatever, like, ran up in the gates as soon as, like, wa- uh, walkers, riders were on the horizon. Right, And it yeah. wasn't even that, it wasn't like a, a siege force, just a few riders coming there, like, everybody inside. Right, so, yeah, and that, that is something so, crazy yeah, and yeah. I really, I, Angela King said we'll get some backstory on that uh, next, you know, the ne- the second half of the season. I'm anxious. I want to know what the hell happened. I mean, these were allies. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, and, and that is real life. I mean, people do fall out, you know, countries that have been allies have fallen out over little stuff, but I just imagine the stuff that they've been through together, man. I mean, something crazy must have happened in order to turn your back on that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Rick was the glue that held them together. So it seems. He was a great negotiator. He was great. He made great deals, and he was uh, he was a good leader. And, and they mentioned Oceanside. We haven't seen Oceanside since the time jump, right? No. Since Rick's exit, you know, we we haven't really seen them, but we did get mention of them uh, with those, you know, obnoxious teenagers. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Have you been to Oceanside? Is it really all girls? Ha ha ha. Topless uh, volleyball and uh... yeah, <laughs> but um. Yeah, I uh, I don't know, man. I really want to know what happened, and I don't like them not getting along. This is kind of like Parks and Rec. And slight spoiler alert if you hadn't watched that show. But, the, I mean, this isn't anything. I won't do any huge spoilers. But, like, when you come into the last season, season eight, you know, in the first few episodes, Ron and Leslie are not friends. And they were, like, the, you know, Rick and Daryl of, of, of the show. You know what I mean? Like, Leslie and Ron's friendship just was the – just made you go oh like yeah. so many times throughout the show and i remember staying up 
binge watching and I told my girlfriend, I was like, no, I'm not going to bed until I find out why Leslie and uh, Ryan aren't getting along and until they resolve this ish because this ain't right. I feel like I'm going through that again here on The Walking Dead. Yeah, I, I, I still haven't finished Parks and Rec. It's really you know, good. I, I highly it recommend it. from day one, but for some reason, I, I don't know. I highly to recommend it. For a while, and not that it's even on cable. but I've been through it twice. Been through the yeah. office about a hundred times. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I just feel like I'm going through that again. I'm like, I need, I need, I need Michonne and Carol and Tara because even Tara seemed to be kind of uncomfortable talking to Michonne. She's just kind of like, all right, <laughs> I'm yeah. out. And and uh, what Michonne made some kind of comment about you know she wasn't proud of what she did, but everyone's alive because of it. Something to that extent, right? So yeah, what are we going to so, find out? What yeah. happened? Is there anybody missing that we haven't thought of that maybe Michonne killed? Mm. Like, are there any main care? No. Nothing not to think of. I don't know. I want to know. It's, it's things like that why I am liking this season. I like the what happened to this. I, I like that. I just I, I don't want to get back into that Scott Gimple rut of predictability and, and senseless shock value killing, man. If you're going to kill somebody, let it serve the story right. I mean, and I don't care. You know, he tried to justify Carl's death by saying that would extremely motivate Rick Toward this, you know, time of peace, you could have did that a million other ways, man. It did yeah. not have to be Carl. All it did was motivate Andrew Lincoln to want to leave the show, right? So, I mean, like as much, and you know, if you listen to this show, you know how much I love Morgan. I think Lenny James is one of the most talented actors on that entire in the in talking like Walking Dead universe. I think he's amazing. However, it started with Rick and Morgan. There's a lot of sentiment there. You got to think, Rick has. Let Morgan live through a lot more than he would let other characters live through in the sense of Morgan snapping on him or going kind of, you know what I mean? Morgan, Rick knows Morgan saved him. He's got an important, you know, he's got a piece of Rick's heart. <laughs> he yeah. always will. If Morgan would have died, then I could see Rick striving for peace in Morgan's honor. Like Morgan saved him that, you know, and that's how Rick's honoring or repaying the debt is by yada yada. Anyways, that's a whole nother conversation. But I just feel like. I don't want to get into the Scott Gimple part of like, okay, let's take some whatever and let, okay, we're going to kill him. Oh, cool. How's that going to progress the story? Oh, I don't, I don't really know, but it's going to shock people. You know, it, it would have been interesting to see uh, to see Morgan go up against the Whispers. You know, uh, an enemy he can't reason with or even you know try not to kill. I mean, you can't right. even get close enough to him to you know tell who if you're killing a Walker or per. I mean. That would have been uh, pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see if maybe the wolves evolved into the whispers. Yeah, that could be. Because they were very stabby as well. They were. And they um, like the uh, letter W. Yeah. So That'd be, that would be cool to see, like, through years of... Because let's think about it. Let's think about it. Because the the wolves were very primitive. They believed in, like, wolf law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever, you know. that the, the guy was talking about how the old wolves were killed off, blah, 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 blah. I mean, this could be what happened. The whisper, the, the, the wolves could have evolved into the whisperers. Mm. Um, but I, 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 that's a cool theory. Think about that, uh, listeners. Let us know in the bottom what you think. Could that could they be the leftover few from because I don't think we they, they didn't all die. No, we, we really didn't get like full on closure with them. What so. if Morgan comes back and realizes that by leaving these people alive when he could have just busted some skulls with his old bitch smacking stick, mm-hmm. you know, he could he he kind of created the whispers. That's yeah. dead people wearing interesting you know, theory living. What does he say? People wearing dead people's faces. No. Yeah. But my God, I, I don't know, man. God, I'm excited the that the whispers that all like like I've worn just a regular like latex or whatever mask. And it gets really smelly in there. Imagine oh, yeah. a mask made of dead people's skin. Hopefully, they like Ooh. stretch it out and tan it and let it dry out. No, no, all man. of that. Oh yeah, it's got to be. But you're probably go nose blind to it after a while. I guess. But I mean, I'm glad to see the whispers here. I think their introduction was. Was 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 pretty damn good. I just, I, it's like, dude, you don't have to always. I mean, again, just get away from the predictability, man. Like, I don't know. And then I'm, I, I didn't actually. Luckily, mm-hmm. I didn't even see that Jesus was gonna die. And then I saw a commenter commented that ish like three days ago or two really? days ago about Jesus dying in one of our videos. And I, luck, like I said, luckily I didn't see that before the episode. The Jesus thing, that might be why I'm still so angry about it, was a, so it was such a shock mm-hmm. to me. I was like, what the he-? No way. No way. And um, can we please quit with the leaks? 
How is this show getting leaked so bad, man? Remember back like in the early seasons where every death was a shock? And I mean, who the fuck is on set leaking all of the like? Find this person and fire them. Yeah. I mean, Christ, get these people to sign like this major like. If you spill anything, we can sue you for every dollar you've ever made for. A, I mean, like do something, man. I'm getting tired of these leaks. Some people like spoilers and leaks. That's cool, man, but I no, don't. Not me, man. Ooh. I'm glad I didn't see that comment beforehand because I don't like spoilers. I like to experience things as fresh. And again, this is the reaction you get. Now, I don't think in a week I'll come back and be like, you know, I understand. I might come back a week from now and be like, you know what? I ragged on that episode a little hard. It was a pretty good episode, but I but I will not retract my statement about Jesus. What a way to take a character who's been unutili- underutilized because... Your writers can't figure out how to balance characters worth a shit. You know, watch Game of Thrones. They they know how to take a full cast of characters and make you like each person for different reasons. And or you make their each person's storyline interesting for different reasons at certain points, you know. But finally we think, oh, we're going to have this one character is going to have their moment and they're going to, you know, grow and we're going to get to know them. And, you know, they'll see why everyone loves Jesus from... And, and no, no, we're just going to kill him because we care more about shocking you in the moment than we do actual long term storytelling. So, yeah, I would have much rather seen a Henry get stabbed through the back and Carol just go back into like, you know, like blackout full murder on murder mode. mode. Yeah, for sure. Full on murder. mode. I just man, I, just, I don't like that kid. I'm sorry. I don't I just don't I don't like what they're doing with him or the. No, I I'm with you. I'm trying to give him a chance, but I, I'm I'm and maybe you influenced me. I don't know. But I, the whole time I was watching him last night, I was just kind of like this kid's kind of annoying. I didn't like him as a little kid. I don't like him as a as a teenager trying to figure out how to do the right. Well, due to Gimple's bull crap writing, that's what you get. Because, you know, they killed Carl off. So now all of these awesome storylines that we would have gotten with Carl, we now have to split up between other characters. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, like I said, I mean, there are this season is still overall been great. So while you hear me ragging on this episode, you know, if it hurts your feelings that bad, you know, go back and thoroughly listen to all of the other podcasts from this season. I have done nothing but praise this season from. You know, episode one through episode seven. I, I've even episode seven was a bit slower, but I was like, I still really dig the episode. I like the storylines. I like the pacing. I just uh, please, Angela King. That we we I promise you, us true fans don't really care as much about shock value and deaths as we do storytelling. And if you are going to give us shocking deaths, don't like stop do, making it so predictable with finales and premieres, like. If Jesus was going to die, let it be in like episode 11 or 12. You know what I mean? Like just some random episode where you're like, oh, my God, it's a midseason finale. We saw everybody and Jesus get separated. You can pretty much use just use Scott Gimple style writing and think about that in your head. And you can be like, oh, yeah, Jesus is about to die. Mm. Saw it a mile away. It would have been really cool if Jesus would have been alone fighting. Right. And then the whispers flanked him from the other side so you get a complete opposite like you think jesus is going to die because he's now been separated but actually daryl and all of them are now getting attacked from the other side and he's kind of helpless trying to get to him and that's when he sees like aaron get thrown against the fence and then yeah you know what i mean and he's just like like something like like just be creative writers like dude like if you really want to shock us like shock us I don't know. I, I've got a lot of non. I, I, I'm I'm incoherent. A lot of the stuff I'm saying makes no sense. I just I, well, I was. It's a, it's a it's a it's an emotional. Well, I know, got a text from a friend who is not like you know he doesn't podcast. He doesn't like the show enough to do that. So this isn't someone who really analyzes it. But he texted me last night and said, "What the fucking?" Fuck? And I said, "Yeah, this was about that was about as stupid as killing Carl." Then he said, "I can't believe it. The show was doing so good." So even people who don't analyze this show on the side, who just watch it and then move on with life, are like, "Oh, come on, man! You were doing so good. Like that was a stupid decision." No. Please, Gimple, go away. <laughs> like I really just want to meet Scott Gimple and be like, "Hey, man." Go away. Like, please leave The Walking Dead alone, dude. Like, I, I don't that, that, that could not. And maybe that was entirely Angela King's decision. Maybe. But that is a it feels like a Scott Gimple move. Uh, yeah, like I said, right. it could be 100 percent Angela King. And if it is, it's she's been influenced by Scott Gimple. This is all his fault. It, it, there are times I like him, but yeah. he, he, he I don't know, man. 
it's just more formulaic with Gimple, and it's just more. I mean, you know what's coming. Remember the season five finale? Uh, no, season four finale. Sorry, going into season five. Nobody died except for one of the Terminus people that Rick shot. Remember how exciting that was? The yeah. season ended with them being thrown in that car and no major characters, you know, no, no, not that I can think of. No, no major characters died in that finale. Yet it was exciting when season five rolled around. We were ready. How are they going to get out of this? What the hell was up with these people? Let's do it. Like, you don't have to be so blue, you know what I mean? Just, I mean, a finale does not mean a death has to happen. And if it does, let's let's let, 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 let it be feeding the story. Like, this is going to have the, you know, I mean, not just like, oh, like she pretty much said, who can we kill to make sure that the Whisperer's entrance is shocking and memorable? Maybe you don't have to kill anybody per se. How about you just use the skill of writing to, you know, I just smacked my mic. Use the skill of writing to sway us or let us know that the whispers mean business. I don't know. It's just very, I don't know. There's a there's a great channel called um, Breaking the Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Good stuff. This guy does a great job of showing you. And, and I mean, again, this is one of my favorite shows. So even if they end it, I, I'll still say, yeah, they made dumb decisions, but it's my favorite show um, aside from Lost. But he's very good at pointing out how the Walking Dead's writing can be very formulaic and how you can almost predict everything they're going to do because there's nothing really that creative or different about their writing per se. You know, I mean, they just kind of get in these ruts and they just do the same things, but I don't know. I'm trash talking it now because I'm angry, but just know I do still. I mean, I like I'm going to be watching the premiere just as excited last night. If you'd asked me, I'd have said, nope, I'm done with it. We're, uh, we're going to yeah. get through this. I, I hope get through so. It. Good stuff to come. Negan's uh, running around, you know, uh, Father Gabriel going through butt withdrawal. Do you think very that sad. Negan, you know, you've been a very big proponent for Negan getting that butt from Maggie. Yes, I have. Do you think that with Maggie's return, maybe that's how she'll return? She'll run into Negan? Oh, man. She'll be yes. like, what are you doing Sparks out of your What are you doing out of your cage? And he'll be like, oh, I, I, he'll say something, snap you back, and then it's like, bow, 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 mm-hmm. bow, bow. she'll kick Georgie and those two girls out the van. Get out. Well, maybe <laughs> they stick around. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, you know, Negan likes likes a few ladies. And of course, this is speaking from the uh, situation. This is speaking from the perspective of what I think JP would like to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see it. I don't know, man. I don't know that I want to see Georgie in jump right into now. that situation, though. I mean, she at least be there to you know, like uh, flip the record over when the, when it you know plays yeah. through. So. <sighs> So, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about the episode. I know that I pretty much focused on Jesus' death and sorry that you had to listen to me, you know, bitch for 40 minutes. But, you know, hey, you always have the option to click away. You know, the first stage of a loss is anger or is a denial. I don't know. But either way, anger's in there. And keep in mind, I mean, no no sympathy vote here, too. But we also did just bury my grandma on Sunday. So I might be still a little bitter from that. And it's just carrying over to The Walking Dead. So if that's the case, I'm sorry, Angela King, but you shouldn't have killed Jesus. Mm. I mean, ugh. but yeah, uh, let's before we rate this episode, let's let's name some positive. I think the whispers are very well done, like the costumes and the the way they presented them, very well done. Yeah. I, I think that the, uh, I mean, I, I will admit. Though I don't think he should have immediately died afterwards, even though I knew it was coming. When that Whisperer dodged that attack, that was shocking. You were just like, even though you knew the Whisperers were on the way, even if you read the comics, you still were like, oh, man. You know, it was, I I, I give Angela Kang props on that. Her introduction of the Whisperers was masterful. I think that, I, I and, and seeing Beta, I can't wait to show you after this mm-hmm. podcast, I'll show you a picture of, 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 of Ryan Hurst as Beta. I mean, he looks creepy as schnit. Not he almost right kind of looks like a G. He almost looks like the dude from Jeepers Creepers. Oh man! I mean, you know, just has the bright, you know, the eyes kind of yeah, glaring yeah. through the. I, and Ryan Hurst is a great actor, so I'm excited to see him play Beta. Um, and I don't know if we saw Alpha in that preview or not, but I mean, I, I'm excited for the next half of the season. I just as am I. I just think this was a moment of weakness in the show writing. Not not the strongest uh, mid season finale they've ever had. Nope. That's for sure. But uh, it so could have been. It, it definitely could have. Oh been, yeah. yeah. So let's uh, let's end by rating the episode and then the season thus far. Okay, oh, and, and of course, both on a scale of one to five. Put your fingers under the table. Okay, okay. All right, you ready? I think so. Go. 
I'm gonna give it a. I don't. I don't know. Are you doing three and a half? Three and a half. I did three. JP did three and a half. I give it. A, I give the midseason finale a three out of five. I'm not going to go as crazy or, you know, outrageous as to give it something like a one or a two. I mean, it still was good. The introduction of the whispers is definitely going to be a memorable one. I'm excited to see where they're going. I think that so far she's done a great service to the whispers. I think Angela King did a great job of making them very creepy, a different kind of enemy. It's not the same old, oh, God, here we go, another group-on-group battle. I mean, you're kind of like, what the hell are we up against here? So, I mean, kudos. And and, and she's done a great job. I just feel like this episode fell a little flat, so I'm going to give it the lowest rating that I've given any episode this season. I don't think any of them have been under a four, and I'm going to just say three. Yeah, a little less filler would have been nice, a lot less Henry. Right. And, you know, a little bit more realism with the uh, with the whispers, like shepherding the herd. I mean, I don't think, like I said, with firecrackers, I think they would have, you know. They would have been like, to hell with these leading walkers. I'm going to where the sound is. Right. I'm hungry. So I, I think there, there could have been a few tweaks there, but all in all, not, I mean, not a bad. And now let's now. rate the season thus far. Angela King's. Show running first. What are we going to give it? Season so far. Are you ready? You gonna? You ready to go? Oh boy, I'm thinking about it. Uh, carry the one. All right. All right, <laughs> all right go. I'll give it a. You've, you good of a four? I get, this time we reversed. I did three. You did three and a half. Now you're doing four. I'm doing four and a half. I'm going to give the season thus far, even though killing Jesus was a a stupid move. Uh, I'm still going to give the season thus far a four and a half. I think it's been a good season. I think uh, I like the direction. I've been genuinely excited every night for it. Um, and yeah, I just I, I like where it's going. Yeah, I think it's been great. I think things could have got really, really bad after Rick left, and they haven't. I've, mm-hmm. I've liked every episode. I liked every episode before he left. So yeah, I think the this half of the season's been fantastic. I can't wait to see where it's going to go next season, especially with the whispers. It's going to be in. It's going to be really interesting. So we're just going to uh, to see. I just hope that the Jesus death is not a taste of things to come, as far as. Just bad writing, right? Lots but. of a lot of surprises this season. I mean, make Father sure Gabriel, man, and Rosita, and, man, Father Gabriel get, getting two, mm-hmm. get Jadis, and then Rosita, mm-hmm. man, he's been that's the most shocking thing in a you know, that, he's such a soft spoken guy. You know, I didn't even think he was he was really going for anything like that. You know, mm, I thought kinda. he was as asexual as Daryl, quite frankly. Yeah, I could have seen that. I mean, if Father Gabriel's getting that butt, it's about time for Daryl to get that butt. We'll see. I mean, at least let him, I mean, something. I mean, I don't, at this point, we don't even really care who, what, when, why. Just well, at know. least he's got a dog. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't know in which way you're saying at least he has a dog. I mean, I'm, uh, as long as the dog's consenting, I don't, well, no, that's no, no. disgusting. No, he's got companionship and that's, uh, that's all that matters. Mm, okay. Well, we will see you later this week. We definitely are going to be doing some Walking Dead what ifs. Maybe even we'll do a Jesus what if. What if Aaron would have died instead of Jesus? What would the course of the Walking Dead be like with Jesus watching someone that he obviously cared a lot about die? Um, You know, uh, if you've got some Walking Dead what if questions, definitely leave them in the comments section. And don't forget, we once a week, typically on Thursdays, we do a mail call podcast where we answer questions you guys have for us. We'll try to find them. In other videos, but if you go put them on last week's mail call video, we're guaranteed to get them. And and, and note this, please try to do uh, just one question per person because it, it gets to the point where we want to answer all of your questions, but then we end up spending an hour and only getting halfway through because we've answered. So just think of the, the question you won't answer the most, throw that in there, and then save the other question for another podcast. And you can throw all of them in there. Maybe we'll get to them. Maybe we won't. But I'm just saying, try your best to keep it to one or two questions. And that way we can get to everybody. Because we love talking to you guys. That's really the funnest part of this. I believe we would have probably just quit podcasting if if, if we didn't enjoy, you know, hearing from you and talking to you so much. So, yep. I think that's going to wrap it up. More content on the way this week. JP, is there anything else you'd like to say? I'm hungry. I'm, I'm really sad. Yeah. You know, you're wearing that stocking cap, very Jesus esh <laughs> stocking cap there. It's immemorial. So thanks for that. You know, now I'm even sadder. But we will see you later this week. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button. Also, if you subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications of when we post content. I'm Justin. And I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead. Yeah, we are.